myself mr mate ht department of botany rbnb college sri rampur today we are going to study tybsc botany paper first bo331 that is a cryptogamic botany topic number 1 introduction now this is the introduction about the cryptogamic botany or about the cryptogams so cryptogams are the plants in which there are no flower there are no fruits and no seeds such a type of all the plants are called as the cryptogams that means uh, they have no flower fruit and seed but they reproduces with the help of a spore such all the types of a plants are called as the cryptogams okay there is a general outline of a classification of these cryptogams this is the old classification of the entire plant kingdom it is old but till today it is in practice so here all the plants that means the plant kingdom whole plant kingdom all the plants are divided into the two groups on the basis of presence or absence of the flower if the flowers are absent then all the plants are grouped in a one group that group is called as the cryptogams why right? in which the flowers are present such all the plants are called as the phanerogams now these the phanerogams are again divided into the two groups that is the gymnosperms and angiosperms because there is also a basic difference these the gymnosperms are again divided into cycadophyta and coniferophyta while these angiosperms are divided into the monocot and dicot but here these the cryptogams are divided into the three groups that is the thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta while thallophyta are also called as the lower cryptogams and these are bryophyta and pteridophyta are called as the higher cryptogam because these are thallophyta are lower or they are primitive as compared to this bryophyta and pteridophyta and also these are uh, gymnosperms and angiosperms now these are thallophyta are again divided into the different group on the basis of some basic characters that is algae fungi bacteria and lichen all of these group have different characters algae have different character fungi has different character bacteria also have different character and lichen also have different character so all of these plants comes under the cryptogams and they are divided into the three groups that is the thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta these are thallophyta are primitive as compared to this bryophyta and pteridophyta so that means all of these algae fungi bacteria and lichen they are primitive as compared to the bryophyta and toward then the pteridophyta respectively so today we are going to see the thallophyta the first character of the thallophyta the plant body is not differentiated into root stem and leaves so such type of a plant body is called as the thallus for example
so these all are the different examples different figures different structures of the thallophyta some are in algae and some are in fungi so this is number one chlorella it is the algae it is just a single cell it do not show the root stem and leaves just like that yeast is there which is the fungus it is also a single celled structure its body is formed by only a single cell and then there is the diatom it is getting divided into the two parts then there is another example of the algae that is the spirogyra it is a filamentous it is a multicellular but all the cells are identical here number of cells are there here all they are single celled but here spirogyra is multicellular but all the cells are identical there is no also the tissue differentiation all the cells are equal to each other now internally the conducting tissue system is also different for example in sargassum Now this is the TS of main axis of the sargassum which shows the three different layers. The outer that is the meristoderm layer inside this multi-layered cortex is there and at the center few celled medulla and this is a medulla. It is only few cells. There is no tissue differentiation. There is no xylem, phloem, etc. All the cells are identical and it is called as the conducting tissue system. So this a conducting tissue system is also very very primitive. Now oh, here in this uh, thallophyta. The sex organs are very very simple, they are primitive, generally they are single celled structure, in some examples multicellular structures are also there, but for example, in a spirogyra, So these are the two different examples. One is from algae and another is from the fungi. So for example, here in Spirogyra, the gametes, that is the reproductive structures are very, very simple. They are non-jacketed, they are naked. For example, here in Spirogyra, this is the vegetative cell. These are the cell wall of the vegetative cell. Only the cytoplasm is get a metamorphosed into another structure and that structure is called as the gamete. So this is one gamete, this is another gamete. They are non-jacketed. That means they have no any protective covering. So this structure is called as the primitive and it is found in the cryptogams. Just like algae, for example, in yeast, yeast there is a single celled structure plant body and this single celled is get a metamorphosed into a gamete. It secretes only the thick wall and such a structure is called as the gamete. So these gametes that is the reproductive structures are very simple. They are single celled and they are non-jacketed. Now the most important point that is the reproduction. All of these cryptogams reproduces by three different methods that is vegetative then asexual and sexual now this vegetative reproduction takes place with the help of reproductive vegetative reproductive, reproductive structure when this vegetative reproductive structure is get detached from the parent plant then it get a germinate into a new thallus so this is about the vegetative then asexual reproduction it takes place with the help of spores for example zoospores are there zoospores and the structure is the zoospore is like this 
Now, this is a juice spore. There are a number of juice spores are get formed. And each juice spore is get a metamorphosis or it get developed into a thallus that is into a new alga or into a new fungi. Just like that, there is the sexual reproduction. In cryptogams, in sexual reproduction, it develops the two different types of the gametes. Sometimes gametes are isogametes, that means both of the gametes, that is the male gamete and female gamete, they are identical. Such a type of reproduction is called as the isogamous type of reproduction. But here in majority of the time, there are the two gametes, one is the male gamete and another is the female gamete. In lower cryptogams, in primitive cryptogams, they are simple, single cellular only, but in higher cryptogam, they are multicellular and advanced as compared to the lower cryptogam. For example, in Kara, they are multicellular, they are very large as compared to these single celled gametes. And these two gametes unite with each other to form the zygote. And this zygote is get metamorphosed into an embryo. Now here, these cryptogams are again divided into the two groups, that is algae and fungi. Algae are the chlorophyll bearing autotrophic plants, that means they are photosynthetic. They prepare their own food material and fungi, they have no chlorophyll, so they are non-photosynthetic. They are non-photosynthetic and heterotrophic in nutrition. Now the next point, that is the higher cryptogams. Higher cryptogams are divided into the two different types, that is the bryophyte and the pteridophyte. Now this bryophyte do not show root-like structure, lip-like structure or proper stem-like structure. For example, These are the two different examples from the bryophyta. First, that is the rixia. Now, it is a thallus-like, it is completely thallus-like. It is a thalloid and it is a flat. But another example, that is the phenaria. It is a folios. It shows the leaves also. It shows the leaves also and it is a folios and upright. That means these are the two different types of the structure in which one, that is in the rixia, there are no leaves. But here in this phenaria, there are leaves. But in both of the structures, in both of the examples, roots are completely absent. But instead of root, rhizoids are getting developed. So here these are the rhizoids. They perform the function of absorption, etc. Now next, that is the conducting tissue system is very simple. For example, in rixia.
Now this is the TS of a thallus of the rixia. It shows the two complete zones. The upper zone, that is the assimilatory zone, it is also called as the photosynthetic region. And toward the lower side, there is the storage region. And in between these two, there is the conducting tissue system. This is the conducting tissue system. It is very, very simple. There is no differentiation in between the, in between the uh, xylem and phloem. All the cells are identical. All the cells are the same. They are only thick walled as compared to the storage region cells. So this is in the rixia thallus. The vegetative the reproduction takes place by the vegetative reproduction takes place by tubers. Tubers and gamic. Tubers are vegetative structures. When they get detached from the parent plant, they have capacity to develop into a new thallus, into a new plant. While gamy, they are developed on the thallus, for example, on Marcantia. This is the Marcantia thallus. And they developed the vegetative reproductive structures. They are cup-shaped, so they are called as the gamy cup. And in this gamy cup, there are some dumbbell-shaped structures, which are called as the Gimme. The gimme are like this. They have a shorter stalk and this structure can germinate into a new thallus. For example, it is found in the Marcantia. They are developed on the thallus of the Marcantia. They are cup shaped. So they are called as the gimme cup. And in the gimme cup, there are number of the dumbbell shaped structures. They are called as the gimme. And gimme has, gimme can develop into a new thallus of the, for example, in Marcantia. Now about the sexual reproduction. Now the sexual reproductive structures are very large. They are multicellular. We can see with the naked eyes. For example, in the male reproductive structure, So in bryophyta, this is the male reproductive structure which is called as the anthridia. It has a short stalk and it has a sterile protective jacket and it is called as the jacket. It is a sterile covering and inside this there are number of the cells and all of these cells are called as the androcyte mother cell and this androcyte mother cell get a metamorphosed into the antherozoid. So in this way, very large number of the anthrozoids are getting developed in this anthridia. And by gelatinization of the wall, that is the jacket, they comes out and swims in the thin film of the water. So this is about the anthridia, that is the male reproductive structure or the female reproductive structure.
this is the female reproductive structure which is called as the archegonium and it is getting divided into the two part the upper part which is the narrow is called as the neck and in the neck there are the neck canal cell and at the apex there are the cover or lid cell the number of a cover or lid cell is different in the different examples and toward the lower side there are somewhat a spherical structure which is called as the venter and in the venter there are the two cell toward the upper side there is a small cell which is called as the ventral canal cell and toward the lower side there is a large cell and it is called as the egg now what happens during fertilization the anthrocytes when become mature through the thin film of water they reaches up to the here that means up to the cover cell then gelatinization of this neck cell ventral canal cell takes place and finally this anthrocyte reaches up to the egg and fertilizes the egg and there is the formation of the zygote so after fertilization zygote is get formed and this zygote by division and redivision get metamorphosed into embryo so this is the embryo and this embryo is get germinate into a new thallus of the bryophytic plant now alternation of generation in bryophyta there are distinct two generations that is the gametophytic generation and then sporophytic generation the gametophytic generation which gives the gamete that is the male gamete and female gamete while another generation which is called as the sporophyte which gives the spores now when this sporophyte generation gives the spores they germinate into a gametophyte and when gametophyte is get developed it develops the gametes and in this way both these generation that is the gametophytic generation and sporophytic generation continuously alternate with each other and this is called as the alternation of a generation thank you